Well, guys, even though we're creeping up on Halloween, Christmas is right around the corner. Whenever it gets cold, it starts snowing. Billy comes a calling. It's me, Billy. Don't tell Agnes what we did. Don't tell Agnes what we did. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. Welcome to my 31 days of horror. And on today's video, we'll be ranking all the Black Christmas films, including the two Black Christmas fan films, It's Me, Billy, chapter one and two, written and directed by Dave McCray and Bruce Dale. And why am I adding these fan films? Because they must be in here, because it's a great continuation of the original Black Christmas, but we'll get into that. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm a huge Black Christmas fan. Halloween's a great time of year, all these horror movies, but horror works so well at Christmas too when executed right. But we got to get some atmosphere around here. So let's set the tone for some Christmas atmosphere. There we go. Much better, right? Much, much better. So coming at number five for this ranking, and I know I may get in crap for this, but that's going to be Black Exodus from 2006. I hate this fucking movie, guys, to no end. I know a lot of you guys are going to have 2019's uh, Black Christmas. But for me, this one's intolerable. I just can't stand it. Everything Black Christmas represents, this does the absolute freaking opposite. Moon atmosphere gone. You know, that great organic Christmas atmosphere gone. This one just goes for the cheesiest kill kills, the campiness, uninteresting characters, laughable characters. It's so campy that it goes into spoof territory, and that's what I can't stand. Do not turn my favorite films into spoofs. I could tolerate 2019 because at least it wasn't a freaking spoof. That's just me, though. That's just the way I look at movies and stuff like that. This one just... It hardly does anything for me. It's actually it was painful to even get through. I don't like that they show Billy. I don't like all this backstory they give to Billy. I mean, it does have some pretty decent Christmas atmosphere when you start watching it. They bring in Andrea Martin from the first movie, make her the house mother, but they just don't do anything with her. Yes, the kills are gory and everything, but Black Christmas is not built on gore. It's not built on this kind of slasher movie. It's built on nuance, and it's built on mood, it's built on atmosphere, it's built on tension. This has none of that. Completely none. You know what I mean? And, and it's not even really fun to watch for me. Now, I will give credit to Katie Cassidy in here. I do think she is probably the best part of this movie. You know, it, like, even when she did the Nightmare remake, she was the best part of that movie. But unfortunately for her, she's in some... Awful fucking remakes, man. Awful fucking remakes. This doesn't do much for me, man. I mean, the palette is way too colorful. I get they're going for that real Christmas, bright colors, joyful, and everything like that. And the way they're they're paying homage to some of this Black Christmas stuff, like with his eye and everything, but they do it way too much, man. They're doing stuff in this movie way too much just to say, oh, remember that from Black Christmas? Like when his eye's looking through the freaking... Um, the floorboards and stuff like that. It comes off extremely silly and dumb to me. But I mean, I could go on and on how much I hate this fucking movie. But um, there you go. Okay, coming at number four is Black Christmas from 2019. I did watch this to get ready for this ranking. And man, it's got its problems. Got some serious problems. This movie really is preaching to you. Men suck. Deal with it. <laughs> Tell us what you really think, ladies. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not. There's nothing subtle about it. And when it's hammering that message to you, when it's hammering, you know, that guys suck and everything like that. Even though there's there are some nicer guys in this movie, you know what I mean. They try to balance that, but it's not a good freaking balance. You know what I mean. But I just tolerate this one more. I don't think it's still as bad as some people make it out to be. But that's just me. Like, I could tolerate it. Just takes that Black Christmas name. It shits all over it. You know what I mean? It has nothing to do with your, with Black Christmas, with Billy and just Bradford, anything like that. Just 
tying in all that in, there's nothing there. I get it, it was trying to bring awareness to its message and everything, but you want to see one that handles it really well, Promising Young Woman. Promising Young Woman did the same thing, brought awareness, but executed that film at such a great level. This one just doesn't do that as much you know, at all. You know what I mean? And even the crafting of the movie. People want to see this kind of movie to go to the theater, have a good horror movie, have a good date night. And it was just this message was just being crammed down their fucking throat. And, you know, I'm completely on board with you guys. I understand that. Also, just the camera placement, the way the, the scares are crafted. They could have been good, but I don't know what they were thinking. Like when they do this kind of scare from something like the exorcist 3 even though i haven't seen that movie i know the big scare where the the figure comes out of nowhere they tried doing that here but they put the camera almost up in the corner of the room so you're looking around the room you know something's gonna pop out so not very well executed another one was in the attic where the where the girl gets up then she sits down she gets up then she sits down looking for lights and then the image the buddy's sitting there and he comes out and you knew that was coming if they would have done like a michael myers and dimmed the light so he was always there and it, it was fading in that would have been a lot better so just some the way they were crafting their scares and everything i don't know it's just a real amateur director or just you know they're trying something different i don't know but it did not work but Imagon Poots is definitely the, the best part of this movie i do like her character i like how she just wants to let all this go and just move on and all that kind of stuff but it's just what they give her in this script i mean there's so much telling and not showing one scene i did like though is when you know the guys in the robes or these this pagan cult when they break into the their dorm or their house where they're having christmas and everything i thought that scene was okay and i really think this would have worked better as just like a halloween style movie if this would have took place at halloween you know, they're having a dance at Halloween, all that kind of stuff. It fits that pagan cult, I think, a lot more. And you you wouldn't have used the Black Christmas name. They used the Black Christmas name to sell the movie. It's not good, but I've seen worse, clearly. <laughs> Coming on number three is It's Me, Billy, Chapter One. I love what Dave and Bruce did with this movie. Continuing the story on from the original Black Christmas, it's something like 40 years later or something like that. The movie is cast so well. It's some incredibly talented girls here like Shelby Hanley, Victoria, and Malika. They were just great as our, our, the three girlfriends here. And the way Dave showed Billy where what he's doing now, you know, he's got the long hair, this plaid jacket, completely terrifying, completely demented in every way you know what i mean and so the this movie's basically your setup jess bradford is dead presumably and billy's back man and i just love how dave uses the mood uses the atmosphere you know doesn't really have a score it has this these screechy strings and stuff like that it's not a bloody it's not a gore fest he's going after it feels like black christmas it feels like that original black christmas with good characters and, you know, the way he offs these girls, you know what I mean? Like the way Malika dies in the bed where he's, Billy's is on top of her, stabbing her to death and like shrieking and laughing. Just fantastic. My favorite shot in the movie is when the blanket comes off Emma, played by Shelby Henley, and the camera's pushing in and you see her in that plastic bag, a good homage to the first movie with Claire. Just absolutely fantastic. And Victoria, Mir Victoria Miro has to go for some deep emotion in this movie it's it's just it's just a white knuckled tension you know in a setup movie a setup movie it feels most like black christmas you know this is where you get all the the crazy phone calls the kills and it, it dave and bruce did a great job of bringing black christmas back coming at number two is it's me billy chapter two now this just come out on youtube recently so it's the second chapter. So this essentially, if you watch both of them back to back, it's one full movie. This is really your your end of your second, third act, right? And amazing. This has relentless, heart-pounding suspense. And this is just this is a great gift to all us Black Christmas fans that will keep on giving every single year, man. Dave and Bruce, this gave us an the best gift Black Christmas fans could ever get. 
I mean, there's the beginning, there's the middle, and he wraps the whole ending up. Still keeping Billy mysterious, and we still don't know a hell of a lot about him. We get Jess Bradford back, and the lady who plays Jess Bradford was awesome. Olivia Hussey set this character up in 1974. Seeing Jess Bradford so many years later, the way we see her... You know, the, the dialogue they give her, just amazing. She she felt just like Olivia Hussey. You know, the way she talked and everything. Just nailed the character down. Victoria, who plays Sam, she gets a really satisfying arc. You know what I mean? She finds her strength, fights back, defeats her monster. And her monster is Agnes. And it's me, Billy. Agnes knocks Sam out and captures her and everything like that. So with uh, Sam's arc is defeating Agnes, and I just loved Agnes in this. Agnes terrified me. And the lady who played Agnes, Carol Coltman, sent shivers down my spine, man. Shivers. Just the way her presence, just the way she's standing there, the way she's talking to Jess, the way she's talking to Sam. She just had this command in her voice that, that would terrify even Annie Wilkes, man. She was absolutely awesome. I just loved her in this. Just the way she would, you know, this her facial expressions. Did she just terrify you by looking at you? Like when she tells Jess Bradford, she's like, there's one line in here where she says, what's the matter, Jess? Lost your Christmas cheer or something like, or something on those lines. The way she says it, though, I, I mean, nothing rattles me. Most characters in horror films, they don't rattle me too much, but... I was watching this. I don't know if it's just because my first time watching it, but she sends shivers down your spine. Absolutely fantastic. But yeah, great job of what they did with It's Me, Billy, too. Especially, you know, Lynn Griffith's back as a different character who played Claire in the original movie. And, you know, she was like a, a detective and everything who tried to solve the these old murders and everything like that. And it's also got this true crime edge feel to it that I, that I really liked and it had a really satisfying conclusion to this whole story. You know how much I look forward to Christmas time? Watching Black Christmas. Now I get to watch It's Me Billy. It's Me Billy Chapter 2. I hope Dave and Bruce put together put it together in one movie. That would be really awesome. Man, what a gift. The gift that keeps on giving, man. <laughs> but coming out at number one, guys, is the original Black Christmas. I have reviewed this film on the channel before. I love this movie. This movie is just amazing. Jess Bradford, one of my favorite horror characters. Billy is so damn interesting. The phone calls are so creepy. Bob Clark gives us these really quirky, real kind of characters. Margot Kidder, you know, this really cool character in this movie. The kills are awesome. The way they show Billy, where you never really see him. You never know much about him. You know what I mean? That one eye shot where he's peeking through the, the doorway and stuff like that. Just a, an amazing movie that's filled with nuance, mood, atmosphere, really building this white knuckled tension, throwing the humor in where it's supposed to fit. I just love Black Christmas. And it has this, I love the house, I love the, the Christmas atmosphere, but it's real organic. It's a real cold feeling. It feels like Christmas. Filmed up here in Toronto, Canada, and I'm Canadian, as you guys all know. I don't live that far from Toronto. That's the way it feels here. And I just love that movie. It's almost like it's, you know, this is our Canadian. This is our Halloween. This is our Canadian slasher, you know, psychological horror film that we can be proud of. You know what I mean? So love Black Christmas. That's how I would rank all five of these Black Christmas films. But what about you guys? Let me know in the comments below what you how you feel about all these Black Christmas films. We'll have a good talk, discussion about it, as always. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. And don't miss out on any future content for sure. So my name is Jason. You've been watching Backtrack Cinema. Look below for a video. I'll put a video so you can go down the rabbit hole, watch more stuff on my channel, all that kind of stuff. So I'll see you next time, guys, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.